I am legitimately nervous to make this video because I'm going to be ranting a little bit and uh, defending permission to dance. For those of you who discovered me from my last video, which was my reaction to permission to dance, then you probably like the song and video yourself. And if you are not on Twitter, and if you do not follow D'Angelo Wallace, then you probably will have no idea what I'm talking about because you loved the song and video too. If you're on Twitter, then you probably have had massive acid reflux for the last week, like I have. I, I'm, I'm disappointed, I just wanna say, I just wanna say hi, my name is Ashley Sue, and if you're new here, welcome. Here I talk about BTS, midlife, and mental health, and often how those things converge. I'm the only mental health I'm gonna talk about this week, or this video, is my own anxiety. I loved Permission to Dance, genuinely. It is a joyful song and video, and I have no doubt it is not everyone's cup of tea. I don't know who could have a beef with the video, and some of the arguments I've heard against the song and video have made me incredibly frustrated and irritated, and particularly because I'm addressing D'Angelo Wallace because I have promoted him here on my own channel before. He's an intelligent man. He is insightful on all kinds of things and wildly smart. However, what I have realized, and I'm disappointed in myself that it took, it took him singling out BTS for me to see this, is he's, his channel can be a bit mean. Often the topics he is singling out are ones that he feels like need to be part of public discourse. He's brought up to topics such as racism, he's brought up you know, the hypocrisy of the vegan teacher on TikTok. He's brought up things that are in the news and he's brought up a lot of stuff about COVID. And maybe that's why he felt the need to single out BTS here. However, he sort of has a history with singling out BTS. And he's not the only one. That was the tip of the iceberg for me. I have some conversation pieces regarding anyone who doesn't like Permission to Dance or arguments you have heard against Permission to Dance as a song, particularly as a video. So hang in there. The song is not picking up the traction that Butter did, and that honestly confuses me and disappoints me because to me Permission to Dance feels like it would be such a radio-friendly banger that everybody would be playing it and listening to it. I'm not gonna complain. Butter has been wildly successful. Hopefully Permission to Dance picks up some steam, but I am stumped. I'm stumped over the negative reactions to it. It's, it's pop. It's, it's way more pop than the guys normally done. So for people who have a problem with it based on that, because you don't like things that are pop, okay. But uh, the rest of it. So let's talk. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous to talk about this, but I'm, I'm ticked. I'm too ticked. I taken a trip with some family last weekend, which was anxiety inducing enough. And then I pulled up Twitter. I left here in love with Permission to Dance and just knowing it was gonna blow up, that the world was gonna fall in love with the song. And then I pulled up Twitter two days later and it was like a freaking war happening. Oh my God, I hate Twitter so much. I currently stay on Twitter for the gorgeous gifs because if, or gifs, I'm not sure how you say it, but if you want to see gorgeous visuals of our guys, Twitter is the place to stand. God have mercy, don't read anything though. So let's talk some talking points here. I'm going to address some of the attacks made on Permission to Dance and discuss briefly where that's valid or where we need to move on because like this says over here, um, you have permission to leave. If you don't like the song, and if you don't like the fandom, and if you don't like the band, we have dancing to do. So the rest of you have permission to leave. One, people wishing they would go back to darker concepts. They will, they will, they're artists. This is what they do. They aren't going to pull the rug out from underneath us and become Justin Timberlake. There's a few reasons why they've gone pop. One of those being they said they wanted to offer the world something joyful. They were supposed to be in the middle of their Map of the Soul tour when COVID destroyed everything. They were supposed to be in the middle of their Map of the Soul tour, a very dark tour, when they created Dynamite as a way to bring color and joy to the world. And it brought some of us into the fandom. I had never heard a single BTS song until Dynamite. And now 
That song doesn't even make my top 20 favorites. It doesn't even make my top 40 favorites from BTS probably. I'm ahead of myself here. The world is still struggling. And here in America, a lot of things have opened back up. Whether or not that's a good idea, right now, people are everywhere without masks. Everywhere, on top of each other. It's crazy. Parts of the world right now are still under lockdown and have strict curfews, including South Korea, D'Angelo. He's trying to school South Koreans on like, guess what? COVID's still happening in the rest of the world. They know that. They have far stricter regulations right now, restrictions in South Korea and pretty much most of the world than we have here in America right now. We are the oblivious ones, not them. But if you're a long time ARMY, I do understand how it'd be frustrating to have been really into their darker concepts because they cover them so well. And then feel like, what has happened? Why are we getting these English pop bops happening? Could feel like a slap in the face. So for you long time ARMY who are feeling a little frustrated, you're longer fan than I am. So I feel like I shouldn't have to remind you, but you, we all need reminders sometimes. They're going to go back to all of that. They're more than, they're more than pop and they're more than dark. They're going to come back and they're going to give it, they're going to hit us so hard with something dark and heavy that people are going to complain about then. So I do understand your frustration though. If you feel like, why is the last year of what they're playing so catchy because even B, B was not dark which it wasn't meant to be it was meant to be a gift of consolation and if you're a non-fan and you're bothered by their pop songs then why are you even talking two complaints about um the video coming across as anti-masker pay attention to the video they're not saying take off your mask and dance and voila the pandemic is over that's not at all what they're saying that's not what the video is about it is clueless insinuations and accusations against them to say that they're anti-maskers because one they are constantly reminding their fans to keep wearing masks and to go get vaccines so that we can retur return to a world where people can see their family where people can do things again second off if you pay attention to the video and granted i watched it several times for it to like really sink in one the people aren't even really there. That's that's all about the future. And granted, D'Angelo said that the only way you would know it's in the future is from watching the teaser. Which, why did they include that in the teaser but not in the video of Suga actually looking at the magazine? This is 2022. That would have been a cool way to start Permission Dance, the video. I will agree with that. However, the people all show up in white. You know, everyone's ripped off their mask. Everyone's dancing literally pans up to the sky and then pans back down and people are gone because they were never there. Um, this is BTS dreaming of a future. But meanwhile, we don't need permission to dance. Meanwhile, we can dance where we are. The school where the, the janitor and the teacher start dancing. The purple balloons signify hope and the janitor is dancing. And the waitress, there's never anyone in the restaurant. Oh my gosh, I'm yelling, I'm sorry. There's never anyone in the restaurant at any point. The waitress is dancing by herself. And throughout the video, with so many scenes of the guys, it reminded me of very um, Airplane Part 2, except for one thing. In Airplane Part 2, it felt like they were alone in that Casa Ranch. In Permission to Dance, somehow in every scene, it feels like they're in places with people. But if you rewatch it, they're not. When they're in the laundromat, it's just them. When they're outside of the laundromat, it's just them, you know? Yoongi is the one playing piano while RM is singing and the other guys are sitting on a bench and when J-Hope is dancing in and talking about don't let it phase you and then he and Suga get it down together that's V in the doorway and that's RM who comes and sits down next to the other guys. It, it's about hope. It's not about ripping off your mask and getting down right now. It's about doing what we have to do now and believing in that future where we all get to dance together. And meanwhile, get down and try to be happy wherever you are. And and vibe with that feeling of hope of what's coming ahead. Two, comments on autotune and their English pronunciation. If you have a problem with their autotune, I've heard some people who actually like the song not feel great about parts that are clearly tweaked. I get it. Not everyone's down with the processed voice. The more I listen to it, it's less auto-tuned than I first thought it was. Uh, they do things where two or three of them will sing at a time and at layers, and it can create that effect also. And of course, all music, all 
D'Angelo even says this, is processed. I can't remember, I don't know enough about it to know the name of the processing thing. This is something that musicians do to have a crisper sound and then some also use auto-tune for a slightly different sound. However, to be honest, our guys have unique voices, particularly Yungi and Hobie. They have, they have unusual voices. So it wouldn't take a lot of processing for us to go, mm. now I'm not defending and saying auto-tune didn't happen. I'm not delusional. I don't think it's as bad as the accusations are about their voices being shredded through a processor. However, if you, want to hear their pure voices, totally valid critic, critique. <laughs> but comments about their pronunciation, that you're being racist. You're being, those are micro level racist comments that you think are okay in passing. And I say that because you're singling them out and saying you don't understand what they're saying is because their English wasn't very clear. You tried to justify it. You, you who I'm tired of naming now, you try to justify your comment by saying, by saying you're, I'm not, I'm not criticizing their English because it's not their first language and blah. Like you really, no pun intended, buttered it up to try to make it sound like what you were saying wasn't actually racist. But here's the thing: Justin Timberlake songs, Ariana Grande songs, The Weeknd songs. You're telling me that the first time you hear those songs, you actually understood what every line they said was. Lady Gaga songs. I mean, I'm showing my age here probably, but. I've never in my life understood all the lines from any song the first time that I heard it through. I grew up, you know, I could actually hear what they were saying much better than now. And still, Guns N' Roses, I didn't know what the hell they were saying in Welcome to the Jungle for the first 20 times. And that's when cool things like lyric sheets, when you bought your tape, your cassette tape, and you got it home. So to hear the song one time, and then start talking about how you can't understand what this one or that one said because their accent. You're singling them out because they're foreign. Because I don't hear you bitching about other people and how, man, I really couldn't understand these lines until later. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. You're choosing to be ignorant of the fact that you are definitely making a micro level racist comment because you're only commenting on not understanding it because they're Korean. While we're talking about the racist concept, people who are upset they're making American songs and how they're losing their Korean heritage. Where was all your outrage with all their Japanese singles they've made over the years? Is that them selling out their Korean heritage? Or are you indicating that, well, it's still Asian, so it's all the same? I can't answer that for you. For those of you, anybody who might watch this, who has made the comment about them selling out to be American, seriously, only you know if you've also been outraged that they've done Japanese songs or you just consider that the same. And I don't know. You got to check yourself on that one. I can't point the finger at you because I really don't know. To say that the American songs aren't very good. Good largely is subjective. However, I will agree. Uh, one of my new friends that I've made through ARMY and Nuna Power, I adore what you said on so many levels about permission to dance and you commented about I believe Dynamite comment about being word salad. And it's a really great way of describing it. It is. Uh, Dynamite was catchy and it pulled me in. And I probably listened to it for about a month straight before I, before I started to go, some of these lines aren't very good. <laughs> some of them aren't. Uh, the song, it didn't make the song bad. I'm just saying mm, some of the lines just weren't very good. And arguably, same can be said about Butter and Permission to Dance. However, I actually think the lyrics for Permission to Dance are adorable. Now, is this their deep intellectual work that BTS does best and has done most of? It is not, it is far from it. Ed Sheeran wrote it. Ed Sheeran wrote it. What more did we expect? Ed Sheeran wrote it. He writes catchy, radio-friendly American bops. But I sincerely believe Ed Sheeran either did his homework on BTS or had some big conversations with BTS because too many parts of Permission to Dance seem very geared toward ARMY, toward BTS and their relationship with ARMY and things they've said in the past that I have a very hard time thinking it's a coincidence. Now, lastly, I've heard some longtime ARMY or medium time ARMY, either one, say that they're concerned that Permission to Dance and Butter are people's first experience with BTS. And therefore they're going to believe that all BTS songs 
sound like this. I get that. And I was that person with dynamite. I had never heard them before and I heard dynamite and I listened to it and it alone for months straight and felt, man, this is what BTS is. I can't wait to hear all their music. And uh, their next videos that I looked up were Black Swan on and Stay Gold. And that's where I was won over. Honestly would have gotten tired of dynamite-esque videos and songs. I would have moved on from them. What pulled me in was the depth and then I needed to listen. It was more than just wanting to watch them. I actually wanted to build that playlist. The, in my life, famous playlist that saved my life on a day that I I really no longer wanted to live. And their voices and their music is what pulled me through the single darkest day of my entire life last November. And it has pulled me, their voices and who they are have pulled me through multiple days since, though none of the days have been as hard as that one. So much grew from there, from just watching a few videos to hearing their voices on headphones, on Spotify, to me building a relationship with myself and believing in my future again and trying to create that inspired by them starting with word salad i mean dynamite so try to have faith that while there are people who are brought in by butter and permission to dance there are people who be brought in who've never listened to them before some of whom are going to like butter and permission to dance and not like anything else that bts has done and some people who are going to fall in love with the guys and go head over heels for them the way that I have and become army for life. So just have faith that this happens. Now, I also want to address that in the tipping point video against permission to dance, I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't see that he does this sooner. Cause if he had made a similar video against OR or one of the other big people out right now, I probably wouldn't have thought it out enough to realize the hypocrisy of him covering it. But he's covered a YouTube video before where he actually reviewed Map of the Soul 7 album and he gave it a decent review and in many regards was very fair with, with listening to the music and what he had to say about it. Why he chose to review that album, I don't exactly know, but I'm not gonna fight it. It's no big deal. He's done album reviews before and that album was a big deal. So he listened to it. He made himself familiar with the guys. He made himself familiar with the music and the concepts, reviewed it thusly and didn't love everything, but I thought it was a really stellar review for somebody who admits they just don't like BTS. That's why I promoted him before on this channel where I take issue with him making this video called, I don't like the new BTS song or I don't like the new BTS video. There were so many things that D'Angelo said that I had an issue with, but one of the main things that I just thought, this is such utter bullshit and you chose to single BTS out. You chose to single this video out for drama clickbait, for views, and granted, we're not on YouTube to not get views. I get that. But I did think he was above bashing something without researching it or thinking about it just because he didn't like it and he wanted drama views until this one. The point where I thought, you can say whatever you want, but it's obvious that you did that. Was when he said, you know, I'm not singling them out because I don't like BTS. I hated this one Taylor Swift song and he shows a clip to the video and says something about how it looks like it's a kid's video. I love Blackpink. I love Blackpink, but I absolutely hated their song, Ice Cream. It's horrible. It's a terrible song. It's the worst thing I've ever heard. It's so much worse than Permission to Dance. And see, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm happy to say things like that about bands that I like too. It's not just because I don't like BTS. Well, where was your video? on not liking ice cream. Where was your video bashing Taylor Swift's video? You went out of your way to make a video not liking permission to dance when you've already set a precedent that you actually just don't like BTS to defend yourself randomly in a course of like five sentences in a 20, 25, whatever, 20 minute video. Well, see, I would say this about Taylor Swift and Blackpink too, and I love them. That doesn't count. Cause guess what? You didn't click the views. You. If you had made a video, I hate the new Blackpink song, that would have gotten a ton of views too. But you didn't, cause you do like them. But you went out of your way to watch this one, written by Ed Sheeran, by a band you don't like, and then to make a video about how you don't like it. Knowing 
that a huge part of the fan base, your fan base, we're gonna jump on and just like blindly be like, yeah, those are good points. Anti-maskers, bullshit video, blah, 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 blah. You also admitted that you wanted to click out halfway through. Well, everything's out of context halfway through. And if you've already shut your brain off to what the rest of the video is, I mean, you know, what did you expect? What did you expect? I, like I said, D'Angelo is a good, he's got a good heart and he's an incredibly smart human being. However, I did, I did realize then that a part of his channel is built to pick on things he just flat out doesn't like. And he kind of admits that and that's fine. I'm just sad that it took him actually picking on somebody I like for me to see that that's what his channel really is. There's an audience for everybody, for everything, and uh, my little bitty platform is no threat to his 2.3 million followers. Uh, so I'm moving on now because I also have permission to leave. So I have ranted like crazy. If you have thoughts you would like to share, that's fine. And if you don't like permission to dance, that is 100% fine. It's not, I, I can't believe more people aren't in love with it because it is genuinely so joyful. That, that's fine, that's fine. It's not a huge deal that you don't like it. It's just about being respectful to things that other people do like and find an incredible amount of hope and joy in. So I'm gonna pull up our men reacting to their own video and the guys look sincerely happy, which, you know, elates me. We're gonna watch this. Look at them. Look at Hobie with that white platinum hair. Yoongi with his white platinum hair. Whoa. I really hope that they are seeing how much people do love it. Oh. It breaks my heart to think. I mean, this is not their first radio with people hating them. But. I guess this was filmed separately. <laughs> magazine. It was the sugar magazine. <laughs> Look at Sugar's face right now. Sugar is just taking it in. V2. That was cool. That was the scene. <laughs> By the way, the more that I watch Permission to Dance, Tay is... All of them, Jen. It's like whoever I'm looking at in any given moment of Permission to Dance is my bias. Look how freaking cute Hobie is in the video. Oh my gosh. God, they're a beautiful, happy group of guys. What is this helmet? Look how happy they look filming. See, we can see each other's facial expressions. Aren't we all looking forward to that day? The ending is actually making me really happy. It should, it's supposed to. Look at Suga's smile. Look at Jimin's smile. Look at all of them. Oh, I'm so squeaky. I'm sorry, I'm whiny squeaky. Kids, you are the future. That was a healing experience. Look at their faces right now. It's the first made me this happy. It is a healing song. The pain I feel is from people who hate healing things. We are. 
We are happier. Kisses to all of you. Beautiful people. We will. Cute. Thank you for watching this video. If you watched it, if you watched it, you either have thumbs down me and really hate BTS and ARMY, or I'm preaching to the choir and you understand my my feelings. Or maybe there's like that little middle, middle ground of people who who aren't sure how they feel about permission to dance and have or haven't been witnessing some of the backlash against it and um, just wanted to have some other food for thought. So feel free to leave your comments below if you have any thoughts on all of this ridiculous drama. Oh, I am going to do videos soon on like their very first videos. Not their first video, I've done that one. Um, but no and Danger and Boy in Love. Yeah, I've got some of those early videos coming. Anyway, God loves you. I love you. BTS loves you. They want you to love yourself. Isn't that what love is? And you never walk alone. Good, bad, treacherous. You never walk alone.